Hello, this is Edith Niemeyer, and I'm the author of the book, The Mystery of Adam. I want to continue um, talking about divorce today. I didn't um, talk too much about divorce um, in my book, but I think this is a very good um, section that I need to maybe expand um, on my YouTube page. Well, I talked last time in my last or previous, actually this, the one um, before the other one, talked about divorce. And I focused on Matthew 5, 31 through 32, and Matthew 19, 7 through 9. And I showed that Jesus really, if you look at the original text, of course, okay, that Jesus um was not against divorce at all he was just saying moses allowed divorce because of your hardening of the heart so because of sin moses allowed um a divorce of course in the beginning it wasn't like that okay god did not uh, plan for the human being to divorce but neither did he plan for the human being to fall. So because of the fall, that's why Moses allowed in the Old Testament to divorce, for divorce. Now, in our fallen world, I believe that divorce is very, very necessary. Okay? And so that is what I'm going to talk about a little more today we have and and if you um listen to my previous video on divorce you um know that these verses in matthew but also the verses in the other gospels were falsely translated so somebody had an interest in lying Okay, to Christians. That's just plain simple the way it is. Somebody had an interest in lying to people. Now, this did not happen since um, since the New Testament. It probably most likely happened during the Roman Catholic Church time. And because during Jesus' time, the Pharisees and the scribes and the people knew exactly that Moses did allow to give um, a divorce degree or degree, divorce paper and sent the party away who is not meeting the expectation. I think that's a, a good way to explain it, meeting the expectation of the other spouse. So when the, one of the spouses is not meeting the expectations or, let's say, is not fulfilling the marriage vow, okay, that's when the Jews knew they could give the failing um party a divorce paper okay now again in a fallen world that was used it was used to the benefit of the stronger person and to the uh, uh, non-benefit of the weaker person in other words, most of the time, women were the weaker uh, people. And so the men used that law for their benefit. So during, during Jesus' time, there was a system, a court system, two actually court systems. And in one of the court systems, the man could send away his wife for any reason at all. Okay? She burned the breakfast, 
um, whatever, okay, for any reason. And that's what that lawsuit was called or that divorce was called any reason law. And that's what they, in Matthew 19, is what they actually uh, tested Jesus on. What did he believe? Can you just dismiss, without a divorce paper, your wife for just any reason? Okay? Any reason. You know, you didn't like her face anymore because she got wrinkles? It was a reason. Okay? And Jesus says, no. Um, no. You have to have a reason. Number one, you have to have a reason. Number two, you can't just send her away. You have to give her a divorce degree. And we talked about that last time. Okay? I didn't talk about this uh, no uh, reason law. There were two laws uh, or court system. One says you have to have a reason. Okay? You can't just send away for your wife for any reason. And one was saying you can send your, um, uh, uh, your wife away for just any reason. And again, Jesus came down pretty hard on them because, you know, they were just, they just wanted to have no reason to send their wives away if they were not pleasing to them anymore. And um, what Jesus says, no, that's, that's not the way it works. Matter of fact, at the beginning, you know, God didn't even allow, I mean, well, I shouldn't say that enough. God had no purpose for divorce. There was no reason, you know, the, the man and the woman was not selfish in the beginning. And so God didn't have to have a reason to have a divorce from the beginning. He created them perfect. They had a perfect relationship. They were one. Okay. They were one. Uh, they didn't rule over each other. They were partners. So they were not taking um, advantage of each other, which ruling a lot has. And the result of ruling is most of the time is that one takes advantage of the other. Okay, that's just human nature because of our fallenness, because of our sinfulness, and the stronger usually takes advantage of the weaker. And we have seen that throughout history. So we don't have any excuse um, to just say, oh, yeah, one of them are in charge. No. The thing is, that's not what God wanted. God wanted them to work as partners. And so God did not have any reason um, for divorce in the beginning, of course. But after sin, it was inevitable. It just was simply inevitable. Now, after sin, as we heard, the man took over. Okay, He took over the ruling. He took over dominance okay, most of the time. I mean, there may have been uh, uh, examples of female, you know, taking over or manipulating the man. <coughs> but most of the time, the man was in charge. And if the woman was in charge, she had to be really manipulative. Manipulative. She had to use her maybe sexuality to... Um, yeah, manipulate the man. But really, basically, it was the other way around. The man was in charge, um, and the woman um, was um, subsor sub subservient. Okay? That's just the way it was. So, and it was because of sin, period. It was just the result of sin. And so because of the result of the sin, as Jesus said in Matthew 19, 7 through 9, he said, that's why Moses uh, allowed you to give the other person a divorce degree. Now, of course, Jesus didn't want a divorce. But again, it was necessary. And I believe very strongly that in our fallen world, it is still very necessary. Now, whoever came up, came up with this idea, and I don't think it was an idea, I think it was purposely done to keep women in bondage, okay? Not necessarily men, because men 
always wiggle their way out. They always wiggle their way out of, um, you know, they were in charge. Uh, have you in the past heard of any woman, let's say a hundred for prior to a hundred years ago, um, getting a divorce is very, it was unheard of almost. So it was not a problem of women um, to uh, have the truth. It was the problem that the men didn't really care what kind of law there was. It was always, um, it always affected women in a negative way, okay? Because women usually were the ones abused. Women usually were the ones that suffered under this lie. This lie that, well, I cannot leave this abusive uh, relationship. Well, most women couldn't. They were dependent on their husband anyways. Again, let's look at 100 years ago, before 100 years ago, women couldn't even have a job outside, um, you know, outside marriage. Um, so we know that women uh, depended on a husband. They depended on getting married. And so for them, getting a divorce was very um, tragic anyways, okay? Because all of a sudden they didn't have any more support, financial support. So, however, pushing women to this point where they said that they couldn't get a divorce kept women even more in bondage and in this bondage of male dominance. So I therefore strongly believe that divorce in our fallen world is something very, very, very important. When people know from the beginning, and I think people when they fall in love, they don't think about that. When people know from the beginning, this marriage may not work out. Okay? So I'm, in other words, I start this relationship, this marriage, really thinking rationally, not, uh, well, this is going to be a fairy tale and it's going to last forever and everything's going to be okay. No, I think people need to be confronted realistically. Okay. Hey, smack them in the face, do something. Hey, 60% of the marriages fail, people. 60% of the marriages fail, people. Okay? Why do they fail? Even today, after uh, thousands of years, uh, brainstorm, I mean, brainwashing people to believe that well, marriage shouldn't happen. I mean, uh, divorce shouldn't happen. Sorry. Divorce shouldn't happen. You know, people will still get divorces because it is so bad. And so then you have, what, 40% made of the people that will stick together? 40%? Really? Okay? 40% will stick together. However, I'll guarantee you that those 40%, many of them, and at least, I would even think two-thirds of the ones that stay together, have an unhappy marriage. I will say at least two-thirds. Okay? Unhappy marriage. Why? Because they believe they can get a divorce. Then they believe they're stuck with an abusive person or a narcissistic person for the rest of their life because God does not approve divorce. Okay? I, therefore, I strongly, strongly, and it's not just my belief. It is also something that I'm hearing from Jesus. I'm hearing it from Moses. Okay, Moses. Okay, he is the guy in the Old Testament. God gave him the law. He spoke with God on that, on that mountain personally. Okay, he allowed it. 
he allowed divorce. Why? Because it is necessary. Because it is necessary. And there was none of this of making people feel guilty about getting a divorce. Now, again, Jesus made these Pharisees feel guilty. Why? Number one, they're not serious about their divorce. I mean, about their marriage. They were not serious. They treated the women with um, like property. And if you really read Micah, um, lots of people um, read that section in Micah where it says God hates divorce. Well, if you read that, and I'm going to look it up. Um, Okay. Um, yeah, Micah two sixteen. God um, hates divorce. Um, now, do you know why? Did you ever read the whole thing, or do you just see it read? Oh, you know, God um, hates divorce. Do you know why? He hated that divorce. Because the man in that example left the wife of his youth, okay, and did not provide for her anymore and just sent her, sent her away, okay? So believe me, it is not, and I'm just looking it up right now. Anyways, again, it is in. Micah 2.16, and I want to write that, uh, not Micah, Malachi, sorry, did I say Micah? I think I did. It's in Malachi 2.16, where God says um, he hates divorce. However, he hates divorce because the man treated the wife with disrespect and um, did not want to provide for her anymore. And in other words, he just sent um, he just sent her away. Okay, the 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 woman of his youth, and God hated that. Not necessarily divorce, because the divorce came out of the man's um, hardening of heart because of his um, selfishness, and because of that selfishness, that's why that divorce came out of. Okay. And God hates that kind of a behavior. He doesn't hate the behavior of somebody who is being abused and who is saying, well, I'm going to leave this abusive relationship. Okay? He doesn't hate that because he does not want us to suffer. Now, really, people, do you really think God wants people to suffer, whether it's a man or a woman? He doesn't. He wants us to be in happy relationships because if we're not in happy relationships, all the energy is being sucked out of, out of us and we cannot fully serve God if we don't have any energy. God wants our energy to be used for him. And so I cannot imagine a God who wants us in abusive relationships. I know it happens, people, but it does not mean that you guys have to stay in, in, in relationships like that, okay? Now, abusive relationships could also be simply, you know, I mean, if, if a husband is selfish and he doesn't care about um, the wife or if it's the other way around. The, the wife doesn't care about the husband and um, there is no oneness. Uh, the oneness is, is not even there. It has never really developed because again, from the beginning, it says they shall become one flesh. So in other words, this oneness has to develop. Okay. It, it's not just there when you get married, when you just says, yep, we'll stay together forever. That is not where the oneness starts. The oneness is created. The one is, is created because two people um, become one over time. Okay? Because they become partners. 
They learn how to cooperate. They learn how to support. They learn how to care. And that's when people become one. Now that oneness okay, that God has intended does not happen when you are married to a narcissist. It doesn't because that narcissist cannot create a oneness simply because they are only in for themselves. And so they don't care about the other person's needs at all. And so a oneness cannot develop. So think about it in that way. When God said what two, what God put together, a man shall not tear apart. Okay. Think about that first. What does it mean that God put two people together? Well, two people have to um, eventually become one, right? And yeah, and that happens under God's watch, doesn't it? Because two people without God, they don't become one most of the time. So, so when we have this one as met not developing, they will never be a really true marriage anyway, okay? So that person that is realizing um, that they have that they don't become one, they are feeling very lonely, okay? Very lonely, very rejected, um, very um, very frustrated and. I'm not sure, and it is very, it's a very um, horrible way of existing, is when you live next to a person who doesn't care about you, who doesn't love you, um, who doesn't honor you, who doesn't respect you, and that person is only in for him or herself, okay? It's very, uh, it, it is almost abusive. Well, it is abusive, so it is. So then it is a relief for a person to know that they can get out of a relationship like that. Okay? Again, marriage is what? It's a covenant. Okay? And when that covenant is not fulfilled, the person that's not fulfilling the covenant, covenant can be divorced. You can say to that person, wait a minute. You are not fulfilling that covenant, okay? This is not what I have signed up for. And you can actually say that, okay? Again, marriage is not something mystical, okay? Like St. Augustine said, it's not a sacrament. It's not something mystical where two people become one and now they're not, they can't be. You know, I guess maybe it is something mystical. If two people become really truly one under the, headship of God, maybe that is a mystical union. But guess what? Not everybody reaches that mystical union at all. I don't even think, I don't know what the percentage is of truly people having that mystical union. In other words, mystical union of a man and a woman and God in union. I don't know how much percent you know, I said 40% and a third of that, maybe 10% of marriages. That'd be interesting to really find out what the percentage of the marriage, the legal marriages, really reach that mystical union that maybe St. Augustine was thinking about. You know, I don't know. I don't know. But not every not every marriage that is joined, even in the church, will never reach that mystical union. I'll guarantee you that. Because if two people and God really would reach that mystical union, there would be no divorce, people. Okay? A relationship like that would never break apart, or very seldom. Okay? Again, that's why they can say, well, God has joined. Nobody should separate. And see, that is the union. But that is something that will be, okay, become one. Okay? And if they become one, they have to work at it. 
When you have an abusive relationship, you don't have a oneness. That mystical union will never be reached if you will call it that mystical un union. Okay? Most marriages don't have a mystical uni union. They have a legal, legal marriage. They have a contract, and that's about it. So I am saying right now is that divorce is extremely, extremely important in this fallen world. Because people need to know that when they don't fulfill the marriage contract, the other person has an out. Okay? And when a person knows that the other person has an out, maybe that person or maybe people will work harder at the marriage. Okay? Maybe they may even think before they get married and say, well, wait a minute. It's that way. I am not going to go through this hardship. I know somebody, I can just tell you right now, that went into marriage just totally blind, thinking, well, this is forever. My wife is going to need, she's going to sit next to me forever. Okay? This is not going to happen to me. Divorce is not going to happen to me. And... And then all of a sudden, waking up to the fact that, hmm, his wife left him. And not being able to handle it because he was so irrational in his thinking. Okay? So it is important, again, that we face the possibility before we get married that this may not last, even if it's two Christians getting married, okay? Especially if it's two Christians, because you just say, well, we're both Christians, that doesn't happen to us. No, no, two Christians are just selfish sometimes as regular people. So please keep this in mind. Um, it is not against uh, God's God to um, divorce, or else it would be in the Ten Commandments, and it's not in the Ten Commandments, okay? It doesn't say you may not divorce. It doesn't exist, okay? I was told that. I was told that I was raised in the Catholic Church, and I can say that right now. I was raised in the Catholic Church, and I heard that, and I went to evangelical churches, and I heard it again, okay? People just Put the guilt trip on you. Okay? Just put the guilt trip on you. Well, what about if this marriage is not working out? Then what? Then what? Are you going to keep people in a miserable uh, uh, relationship the rest of their lives until they die of emotional uh, failure or worse yet, you know, any emotional uh, stress? Uh, has a negative side effect on your health. So they have to stay in this awful relationship until they have a heart attack, until they get um, uh, cancer, uh, until they have strokes. Is that it? So please think about it. I don't think God has any intentions for any of us to live a life like that. So I will finish up. And please put your comments on the bottom and really do your research. Do your research. Reach uh, Malachi. Malachi, it's in, in Malachi 16, but you have to start earlier. And then really look at what does God not like, okay? Uh, what kind of action does God not like? It is not necessarily the divorce, um, but the action that led to the divorce. All right. I will. See you later.